All right, guys, I'm back over here in uh, Premium Coach Group in Gilbert, Arizona, and I just did an inspection on this 1998 Marathon bus conversion, and it's pretty nice. I figured I'd share it with you guys because I really enjoyed it. So I'm going to leave the awning out for the video because it's kind of hot today. We will go around it quickly on the outside, and then we'll go inside. I'll try to get you a better view of what it looks like all closed up. Keep in mind, this is a 98, so who's ever owned it is taking really a lot of pride of ownership, which is what I really like to see more than anything. So let's go ahead and take a look. This does have the Zipti manual awning, which I think worked really great on these bus conversions. They're difficult to put out. It's not out completely all the way because I'm kind of lazy. I didn't want to put the arm all the way up, but it's good enough for now. Not to focus too much on this awning, but this is a Zipti manual awning, which is what you'd probably want to have on most of these uh, bus conversions. They do make the Zipti Air electric awnings, and those have been nothing but problems. So usually you take those off and put a manual on anyway. So you've already won if you have the manual one. All right, it does have window awnings over all the major windows. Like I said, there's no slide outs on this, but in the basement right here, you can see the condition of everything. Very nice, the doors stay up on their own, no issues. Got the big pull out right here, still has all the original awning tools, which is impressive to me. That's a clean basement right there. They did go ahead and update the entertainment compartment. So the outside TV would have been a tube TV, and but this TV does work as a DVD player and the outside speakers still work. And unlike most of them, the entertainment center doesn't take up that entire compartment. So you do have some room in it still. Now with that door closed, I'll try to give you a better look at the uh, sidewall here because this paint it is in fantastic shape. You don't have to worry about the glare of the sun causing issues. You can see how well that stainless steel looks. No dents on it. And this is the XL with the riveted body. I personally do like the riveted look better, but that's just my opinion. Yours might vary. Now Marathon usually has their water bay right in here. Uh, you see there's a 98, so this predates the Mach 5. You just have two SureFlow water pumps there. But they're really... They know how to put their, their mechanical bays on display pretty well. So it does have the two water heaters. These are marine water heaters. They have the heat exchangers. You can make hot water with 110 power or the Wabasto heater itself. It's not hot water on demand. But now this water down there is actually just condensate from the cruise air that's running inside. This is just going to be a sewer hose carrier in between. That little found space between the two wheels. Marathon is known for their... 4D batteries, not 8Ds. These are 4Ds. They're, they're, they're narrower. I'm not ever a big fan of how Marathon puts their batteries in. Of course, they don't ask me. Now, even this engine bay is in pretty immaculate condition. You just have your disconnects right above. These are the chassis batteries right down here. And because this is a bus conversion, that means this is a 24 volt system. If we go around to the back, I know everybody always wants to see the engine, and I don't always show the engine, but here it is, the big Detroit Diesel Series 60. You can see the uh, information on it right there if you care to look. But uh, powers up just fine. I do think it has a little bit of an air leak, but that's not going to be uncommon on a bus. Now if you look down below, this exhaust is actually for the Wabasto heat. The Wabasto heat does work. It needs a service, I won't deny that. Here's where your Wabasto heater is going to be. So that will be part of the hydronic heating, but also give you your domestic hot water as an option. You can see this sidewall over here. Man, that thing looks straight. I know I have the doors open, so it's going to be hard to see completely, but I'll get those closed and we'll get another look afterwards. The window awnings function just fine. And even the fabrics are in good shape. I know nobody really cares that much, but I'm going to let you guys take a look at the roof because it looks good too. So I'm always going to appreciate somebody that takes care of the roof. They did coat it. I'm not completely sure what they coated it with. I don't think it was a complete roll on one, but even though this roof didn't require it, this is a clean roof. I know it's always hard to see white and full sunlight right here. You can even see the, I left the, the searchlight on. I'll make sure to turn that off. But this roof is immaculate. Nice thing about this coating though, as it does reflect a lot of heat and a lot of light, so it will keep it cooler inside. And besides a few little blemishes, like this clear peeling, this paint's in fantastic condition too. 
not seeing too much checking or really any real checking in the uh, the rear cap right there because this will be fiberglass and this is going to be metal and i know roofs aren't that impressive or interesting to look at but it says a lot about the the owner if they take care of their roof because that's where all most all the damage starts is if you let water in the roof move back over here this actually uses 50 amp marine cord to set up the water bay is really simple and straightforward. That's just gonna be a water manifold for hot and cold. Sewer, surprisingly, are electric valves. <laughs> and they uh, they work just fine, even though water. Sorry, the camera keeps overheating, it's just too hot. So that's pretty well out, well laid out water bay here. You can have a uh, water. What a thing to have in a water bay. You can do the water auto fill right there. I didn't show you on the other side, you have a gravity fill. I can kind of show you that. So that would be the gravity fill if you needed to fill it up manually, which is nice to have. Even to the left, you can see they have a, a ladder storage area right there. There's some good storage, found storage space in there. Right over here, you have this other little storage bay. Again, just found storage. Seems like modern ones, you don't get this much storage anymore. It's a nice pull-out bin, probably to store your uh, shore cord. The next one is gonna be that pull out that went to the other side this is going to be the inverter disconnects and marathon has a history of putting circuit breakers where you'll never find them like right there and then the inverter should be mounted right about there that whole thing does flip down to give your inverter access there's just going to be the gauges for the generator and the generator compartment that's a beautiful generator right there look at that this is a great big huge power tech 20 kilowatt out 20 kilowatts that's a big generator. Now this whole generator is on the slide so you can undo those latches right there and pull the whole generator out. Very nice. You can see how clean it is. It's almost like uh, a theme. They've been taking care of this. So there's a good look about what the driver's side looks like. It's gorgeous. Although it has a high windows right there. You don't see them on the inside on the windshield. But check this feature out. They already upgraded the headlights so you have the modern looking headlights on it. So that's, that's a pretty big upgrade somebody did for them. Just let me go ahead and close up this awning real fast. All right, and there you go, awning back away. Now I do always recommend having a ladder when you're doing these zipty awning manuals. You aren't supposed to have to have a ladder, but it's so much easier when you use a ladder to do these things. And so there's a better shot of what that passenger side looks like. Paint's in really good shape. And it's not even offensive colors, no horrible graphics that are hard to uh, justify in a modern era. Even on this side, you can see it a little bit better. Absolutely gorgeous. All right, with that, we'll go on the inside, try to do that just as fast. The nice thing about this is to remember, simple. That's very simple. This is a solid surface Corian stairways with a stainless steel step well. The leather on the drivers and passenger seats in really good shape. It's not worn too badly, except a little bit of wear where you'd expect it. But this is this is true high grain leather, and it's not pink. It is just a tan. It may not translate very well. Even these power shades, uh, the original power shades, they're still in great shape. Even the material is good, which is pretty rare. Also, they're controlled with the controls down here, so you can do. Let's see the co-pilot and we'll go up with it so those are electric but besides one more shade all the other shades in here are gonna be manual which means I'm really happy may not be impressive to too many people but these silhouettes with just a pull cord they always work I've never had to fix a single one of these whereas the uh, electric ones always seem to fail to me of course if you open it all the way up you got the sheer for the daylight there so again i really appreciate that's the little things that work so all these uh panel lights they all light up the radio check this out it still has the cassette tape radio in there with a cd changer right above uh even the the, the dash air works just fine this has a old school dash to it not digital, but it does even have the Detroit D Diesel information screen right there. And this does have a Detroit D Diesel Series 60 on it. I think we covered that before. 
Uh, over here is just going to be the level O or the leveling system for leveling the motor home using the suspension airbags. But yeah, very, very simple. The driver's seat, I mean, it's not worn, it's not torn, it's in great shape. And it is one of those air ride or air shock seats. We look over here again. Now this is laminate for whatever reason. Most of these bus conversions use laminate ca cabinets, but all the laminate in this is in good shape and it's not an offensive kind of uh, dated, pa uh, dated pattern. But all the countertops are, you can see how thick that Corian is. Enough of the cab area. Let's go ahead and give you the big reveal that I know you guys want. So there's the inside, and this thing is absolutely gorgeous. Sure, maybe the Southwestern theme's a little bit dated, but it's just a tiny little bit of trim right there, and the pink and blue. And those are muted pink and blue. They're Unfortunately, this is before they put tile everywhere or hardwood floors everywhere, so you do have carpet. But again, if you look at these rugs, they're custom fit, cu they're custom fit. So they've been on the carpet this whole time, so the carpet's gonna be in great shape. Kinda see where it's cut out of the sofa right there. Now this sofa does turn into a bed and it does have storage underneath, and that fabric is impeccable, it is immaculate. It's kind of a, a suede fabric. It's not leather, it's not woven, but it is nice and it does wrap around with more storage on that booth end. This recliner is again in great shape, which is saying a lot about this has this nice little desk area. Filing cabinets are built in right here. Very nice, all the owner's manuals are still there. Even have more owner's manuals right in there. But there's even this little cool little pull out. Extension for the desk. If we look up to the front, you'll find the TV's been updated. And this does have three cruise airs on it and happily they all work. It also has a hydronic heating, so that's the thermostat for hydronic heating. And of course, cruise airs are both heat, uh, are heat pumps. You get hot and cold from those. If we go past the salon area, you'll find the galley. Now, this dinette does not turn into a bed, but the tabletop is adjustable. And with this rope light that's inside there, it has that infinity looking uh, tunnel through there, but that's just a glass top. You can see that backlight continues all the way around that countertop in the galley. There's also fiber optics right up here in the ceiling, so you should be able to see those changing colors. And the fiber optics are working, so that's a cool feature too. Now for whatever reason, it's always important on these buses to have your matched uh, drinking glassware, and it's all there, which is a good point. And though, even though there's, there's no slide outs in there, so there's no front slide out or bedroom slide outs, this is all just one long bus, it's laid out in a way that makes sense. And I think it's a pretty good use of space. Like I said, this tabletop will move. It'll move forward and backwards. You get a pretty hefty sized sink in here just by itself. And then it has a small work sink right next to it with an Instahot. Now you can see the laminate right in here is in great shape. Usually that's a pretty good indication that it was well maintained in a climate controlled area. Uh, usually the biggest giveaway is gonna be the big long wall panels if there'll be a crack in it but I don't even see a crack in there. And then speaking of updates, so this refrigerator is obviously not original, it's been recently updated, but they did a great job and it fit in there perfectly, including they swapped over the Marathon refrigerator latch. Now looking across from the dinette, you do actually have these uh, apartment size dishwasher. I honestly prefer these dishwashers more than the new drawer dishwashers, but that's just my opinion again. Right above hidden is your electric stove top this is not induction it's just radiant electric stove top there's two burners on it and right above that it's going to be the convection of a microwave in keeping with the uh the simple the pocket door is not electric it's not air it's manual and it's a yacht style or marine style latches on it and it latches substantially so even if you forget to lock it driving down the road it'll just open up or it'll just close it and lock into place you don't have to worry about it swinging around driving down the road or have to worry about air pressure not building up to open up your doors. Or if uh, electricity goes out, how to open up your pocket doors. It's just a manual door, how it should be. Notice if you look at the floor, there is ceramic tile in here. It's not overtly offensive. It has a Saltillo tile look, but it is not Saltillo tile. 
Uh, it does kind of have that 90s uh, flair to it, but I think it aged pretty well. Nothing too crazy with the decor choices. It's more storage hidden right there. Now you have all the mirrors you could ever want <laughs> right above the vanity here. Hello. And all of them do actually open up. There we go. It's always a guess which way they're going to open up though. Oh, I got it wrong again. Oh, this time I'll get it right. Got it right that time. They even went ahead and put the sink kind of right in the middle. So you're out of the way of the doorway when you're using the sink. This does have a porcelain toilet. And this is a great big huge shower, guys. Let me try to make sense of it for you. So I'll go ahead and go in. Now again, I'm about six foot. So this is me walking in. I haven't stepped in yet. There's just my feet against the back right there. So if I just step in, I didn't hit my head. But if I was a, probably an inch taller, I would have had a duck. So that worked out pretty well. But other than that, good headspace in here because that's still pretty, pretty decent headspace. But that is a great big, huge shower in there. It does have a bench seat. And I think you can get two in there pretty safely. It's definitely bigger than the shower at my house. And I know what some of you guys might be thinking. Is that a window in my shower that I can see the bedroom from? Uh, yes, that is a window. I can see straight into the uh, the shower from the bedroom here. There's the bed. There's that window. And you can see into the shower right there. Now, of course, if you want some privacy for whatever reason, you do have a blind right here. Just push that. There's that other power shade I was telling you about. Now, with that one closed, you have privacy to the bedroom. If you look around from the other side, you can see it is closed. I mean, I guess I could still open it that way and take a peek. And uh, you do have this little button right here that says etched, etched accent. So it may be hard to see on camera, but if I turn on that light, look at that. I have a parrot and a palm screen etched into the glass window in the shower. Look, I won't pretend to understand designers. It's cool. I don't know that you need a window in your bathroom or your shower, but it does add a little bit more airiness and roominess to the, the feel of the bathroom. I'll give them that. Now, just to the left or on the passenger side, you have these three big doors. They're mostly closet space. Now, the first one is going to hide your washer-dryer combo. And this is not the original one, so this would have been upgrade, updated at some point. So that means they've been maintaining their RV again. You know what? I'm going to show you guys how clean this thing is by opening up the service access door and you can kind of see behind the refrigerator there's a cruise air air handler you can even see the air filter they've been maintaining that it's always a good good sign when the air filters are clean there's no rat droppings and hidden areas that uh, most people wouldn't know to look into so that's a really good sign now past that you have another door that'll be a pretty good sized closet full floor to ceiling closet and you have another one right there but this one has shelving in it now this door also doubles as your bedroom door so if you open it all the way up that becomes the partition door which is very impressive from this side if you come through to the other side and close it up now you have a full length mirror in the bedroom for dressing if you need to just like most marathons, even modern marathons, you have your pretty standard layout. This that would not look too different from any modern marathon, even to this day. You should be able to still use all the same functionality that you would normally use. It has the two trace uh, 4,000 watt inverters controls on it. And yes, you can control the uh, shower blind from in here too. So there's a lot of trust between the bedroom and the shower. But I do like this dramatic angle instead of just being a 90 degree wall uh, to partition off the bathroom. It's kind of hard to see, but it is at an angle. So it gives you more foot room walking around inside and you can see those countertop edges are still backlit in here. These Roman shades are manual shades again. So I like these. I also like these pretty manual bus windows. No air. No electricity, just push them out right there, kind of bend your rod, and it props it open. It's so simple. It doesn't break. I, I really like simple. I can't explain how much I like simple. Now, of course, just like those uh, air or electric windows on the modern buses, you can't have those open driving down the road. Now, the bed is a queen-size bed. It still has its original comforter, matching comforter, so it matches the balances still. And there is storage underneath, so we can just lift it up. That was just 
one hand, I lifted that up, and you can see you have good storage underneath with a safe right there. Now the found space continues right here with little uh, hampers. Just whatever you want in there. You can see the bedroom TV has been updated again with the LCD TV instead of the original tube TV that would have been there. And most of that's been updated with the DVD player down below. But it does have a CD player back here. Cassette in the front, CD in the back. Probably the last big features back here is going to be the normal dressers that you'd get on these buses. But check out the closet space back here. I mean, this is deep. I could probably lay down in there. So it does have like a dry cleaner inspired closet rod. So you can move it around to get all access to everything you need. You guys should be able to see it's in immaculate condition. The ceiling is in beautiful condition too. And that's why I wanted to share it with you guys. I mean, I like simple, I like beautiful, I like clean. And I like things that work, and I love it when people take care of their stuff. So I think it's pretty easy to see that this bus conversion, this 1998 Marathon, has been well loved, well taken care of, and I really enjoyed doing the inspection on it. But there it was, guys. A quick little walkthrough and orientation on this 1998 Marathon. Uh, really gorgeous absolutely gorgeous in fact love it you might send some sort of a, a theme with me that I like simple mechanical solutions rather than anything complicated and automated or high-tech of course if you open it all the way up you got that shear for the daylight so here I am laying down. My head's not hitting the wall yet. All right, so now I'm laying down. Still gotta have a little bit of space. Ah, let me keep laying down. All right, so now my head's hitting the wall. Remember, I'm six foot. So I only have about a foot and a half of my legs hit, uh, hanging out right there. 